This year, the topic of my talk was devised by a Blue Ribbon Commission. <laughs> and so I hope that I am meeting a very high bar. Zehayom asa Adonai Nagila Venismachavo. This is the day that the Holy One has made. Let us exult and rejoice in it. It's a curious thing because generally you don't have to tell people to have a good time. But these days you do. These days have been so challenging for the world at large, for those who love Torah and the Jewish people, for those who care about human dignity and inclusion, for those who yearn for a world of compassion and welcome, a world that honors the planet on which we live, a world that lifts up the marginalized, that celebrates multiple opinions and responds to different opinions through conversation and engagement and curiosity rather than silencing. In so many areas, we haven't recovered from COVID and from the years of surprising and forced separation from each other, people are not meant to live apart. So this year I take heart in the fact that we are commanded to rejoice because sometimes joy is an act of resistance to those who would smother our divergent humanity, to those who insist we must march their way or get out of the way, we respond like King David by dancing where we're not supposed to and by rejoicing in the values that give us courage and strength and resilience. et Hashem b'simcha ba'ulifanav birnana. Serve God with joy, the psalmist says. And so I want us to think about that because there are a lot of people who are working very hard to shut down our joy. It was H.L. Mencken who wrote years ago that the definition of Puritanism is the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy. <laughs> to which the Jewish tradition, which I would remind you has good reason to despair Jewish tradition from the Bible to the modern age responds in the words of the Likutei Moharan, mitzvah gedolah liyot basimcha tamid. It is a great mitzvah to rejoice. And Rabbi Nachman knew how hard it is to rejoice. He was a man who suffered repeated depressive bouts. And he understood that joy is something you fight for. You don't fight for it with your fists. You don't fight for it by yelling at people. You double down on what makes you happy, on who makes you happy, on where makes you happy. This year, we had the chance to share Torah of the heart with each other. And I shared with you one of my absolutely favorite passages in the Tanakh, and I want to share it with your families today as well. The Jews had been exiled and were wandering the world, starting in Babylon. Seventy years into their exile, a hardy band are allowed back, and they come back to a Jerusalem that has been destroyed. There's nothing left of its former glory. And so they start the patient and tireless work of rebuilding what their grandparents remembered, not even them. And on that first Rosh Hashanah, that very first Rosh Hashanah ever celebrated back in the land of Israel, Ezra and Nehemiah gathered the entire people. They built a balcony they brought up a Torah scroll. It's the first time in the Tanakh we're told they read from the Torah. 
So they made the Torah into a book, which they then read, and they start reading the whole thing. I see the look of panic on your faces. And you people have been inured to the practice of long Torah readings. These people were fresh. He reads and reads and reads, and when he finishes, the people burst out in tears. Nehemiah the Tirshata, Ezra the priest and scribe, the Levites who were explaining to the people said to the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. You must not mourn or weep, for all the people were weeping as they listened to the words of Torah. You see, you don't have to be a Gentile to be a Puritan. There are people in our number as well who would turn our religion into a cudgel of fear. And they would use their panic that somewhere someone is having a good time, that maybe, God forbid, Judaism is a source of human thriving and celebration, that maybe what Judaism does is remind us that we were a slave people brought out to freedom by the most powerful force in the world, and that our story is to be a dancing people of liberation. There are people who hate that vision, who see that as destructive of everything they hold dear. The controls will be loosened. And so the Jewish people, they hear this Torah for the first time, and they respond by sobbing because there's an inner child that thinks we deserve to be silenced and put down. And I love the response. He says to them, listen to this, go eat choice foods, drink sweet drinks, send portions to whoever has nothing, for this day is holy to our God. Don't be sad. And then he says, Ki chedvat Adonai hi me'uzchem. For rejoicing in the Lord is your strength. Rejoicing is our strength. To those who would put us down, we dance. To those who say we don't have the right to stand in the sunlight, to breathe our own air, to be able to determine our own futures with our brothers and sisters, the rest of humanity, to be able to exult in our Jewish quirkiness, even as our neighbors teach us about and celebrate their own uniqueness. To those people who would silence us, and beat us back into fear, I say, Ki chedvat Adonai him uzchem. Rejoicing in God is what keeps us strong. And so, to you, beloved students, you have given me great joy this year, teaching and sharing Torah, watching you ignite and share your light with your communities and the world, watching you find extraordinary places and people in which you can continue to serve, that makes me very happy. And today is a celebration. Not raucous necessarily, but simcha shel mitzvah, the joy of righteousness, of learning, of community, and of love. So I want to remind you, here and now, on the precipice of this great joy, that joy is not a possession. It's a series of relationships. So give yourself the gift of digging into those relationships. Lean into being with the people you love, the people you like, the people you are curious about, give yourself to those relationships. Joy is not a thing to be contained and possessed. It is a series of activities of what we do. You have to do joyous to be joyous. So give yourself time. You don't need an excuse to do something that makes you smile or giggle or dance as though no one's looking. Do it. Shakespeare writes, 
Things won are done. Joy's soul lies in the doing. Do joy. Do it often. Do it raucously. Joy isn't something we fossilize and hold on to and put on a shelf and examine cold and lifeless. It's what we share. It's what we give away. And in the giving, it comes back to us. William Blake writes, one who binds to themselves a joy does the winged life destroy. But one who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. Kiss your joys and let them fly because the more you do, the more will come to you. Look around this room for a minute, would you? Do you feel, you don't have to stand, you're welcome to stand if you want, but look at this room so filled with love, so filled with anticipation. Look at each other, your classmates, and think how far you have all come with each other and because of each other and sometimes despite each other. <laughs> and here you are in this remarkable, unprecedented place. And now for a moment, I invite you to close your eyes and think of those who have loved you who are not here right now. Some no longer in this realm, some simply not in this room. But give yourself the gift of thinking of them. They are very much here in this moment. Can you feel their hug? See their smile? See their nod? They're saying, I knew you could do this. I knew you could be this. Helen Keller writes, as selfishness and complaint pervert the mind, so love with its joy clears and sharpens the vision. See how hard you have worked, the hours you have put in, the sacrifices you have made to be able to stand in this high place in the sunlight, becoming yourself a source of light and warmth for people who are cold and lonely and need you. Think back and recall all of your teachers throughout your life, those in the classroom and those not in the classroom, who have taught you to be yourself. Our tradition quotes Rebbe Mayer as saying that your Rebbe need not be someone from whom you learned most of your Torah. Your Rebbe can be someone who taught you as much as a single letter of the alphabet. The world has been peopled by Rebbe's for you and you have experienced hundreds of them. Let them come to mind right now. Let them sit on your heart and carry you at this moment. And finally, think forward in your life to all the lives waiting for your care, your Torah, your wisdom. Ibdu et Hashem basimcha. This is a glorious and great moment and we're about to kick off that celebration right now. <laughs>